billionaires are taking over sports and if the collective bargaining agreements do not start reflecting that you are going to have more and more examples where more and more players are going and being traded within their contracts and more and more owners who have reckless indifference toward any of these thresholds now billionaires are an interesting bunch when you spend enough time in a room with enough billionaires and i've done that in major league baseball in the room you realize that they all have their different foibles their different insecurities They all have their thin skin. They're incredibly competitive, incredibly egomaniacal. That is in large part, I mean, you could study it, I'm no Freud, but you can study billionaires and say, how do you get there? You have to have certain personality traits. There are certain threads that are very much in common. Draymond Green had a very funny line yesterday or two days ago where he called Joe Psy billionaire petty because he would not trade Westbrook, uh, 4869. Billionaire Petty because he would not trade, Joe Sy would not trade Irving to the Lakers. He said, I'm told that they would not trade him to the Lakers. That's what I call billionaire Petty. That is Joe Sy saying, listen, man, that's where he wanna go. I don't care if they offer the best deal or not, I can be Petty too. And billionaire Petty is a different level of Petty and you can't compete with billionaire Petty. Draymond Green is 100% correct. You cannot compete with billionaire Petty. Do you think that billionaires are petty to the point where they will do something that will hurt their franchise just to hurt someone who's hurt them? Hell yeah. You think the Westbrook and two first round picks was a better deal than what the Mavericks had for Kyrie Irving? Time will tell. We'll see how Dinwiddie does. But all of that said, I've seen billionaire owners do it. And here's how it happens. It's very subtle actually, but here's how it happens. They're not gonna call themselves petty. Instead, what they do is you present them. That's the job of a team president is you present your owner with different scenarios. We've got this that we can do. We've got that that we can do. We believe that this is the best course of action. We do that in sales. We do that in marketing. We do that in player personnel because owners are involved and they want to know what's your, what's the slogan? What are the giveaways? They know everything going on with their organization, which is why it drives me crazy when owners have what they call plausible deniability, which is neither plausible nor deniability. Oh, I had no idea we had a bad workplace culture. I had no idea that we were looking up women's skirts and having naked calendars of employees. Who knew? Who knew? It's ridiculous. So billionaire Petty goes like this. You present scenarios to the owner and you explain because it's your job and you know how to do your job, which is the best scenario for your team. The owner says, but what about that one? And you're supposed to know as chief of staff or president why the owner's saying that. And the owner is saying it because he's got a reason that he wants to do one thing versus the other. And your job is to get that owner off of that bone. Because when they put their jaws into something, that's how they've been successful. They see it, they want it, they get it, and they don't take no for an answer. Did Joe Psy purposefully not trade Kyrie Irving to the Lakers? And then two days later decided, you know what? That was petty of me. Now I'm gonna trade him to the Suns where Durant just sat and told me he wanted to go. Could he have been petty just toward Irving because he blamed Irving for the downfall of the Nets big three. Meanwhile, Durant's the one who demanded a trade before the season. Durant's the one who said it's either Nash, Marks, or me. Durant's the one who had to be talked off the ledge and otherwise you weren't going to pay him. And then a few months later, Durant walks into your office after you traded Irving, who, by the way, was not helpful, and says, I think it's better if you trade me. And by the way, wouldn't mind going to the Suns because they're having the Super Bowl this week. And the only way I can get into Sky Harbor right now is privately. And I know Ishby is going to fly me there. You think Joe Psy changed his mind that quickly? Yeah, it's incredibly entirely likely. Kyrie Irving upon the trade of Kevin Durant already had a comment saying, I'm glad he's out of there. Really? That's like leaving a burning building and leaving your pet behind and having your pet rescued by someone else while you're getting a massage already and saying, oh, I'm glad the cat got out of there. 
If you wanted the cat out of there, why don't you go get him? Why weren't you helpful? Kyrie Irving's the one who set fire to the Nets building. Glad he got out of there. What's the choice? Joe Sy had no choice but to rebuild his team. I feel sorry for Nets fans right now. It's going to work out in the end. I ask you to think of this phrase as you wake up and you're listening to this and you're slightly despondent. It all works out in the end. And if it's not working out, it's just not the end.